This is Funny or Die TV. Zach Morris is trash. Zach is feeling great. Driver's Ed starts today, which is the first step in his plan to drive girls far away, park, and demand a handjob for a ride home. Zach begins his campaign for parked car hostage sex by giving Kelly a ring. She says they just started dating, and she's not ready to be his girlfriend. Zach has no respect for her well-defined boundaries and says, relax, it's a friendship ring. Kelly asks if there's anything she can do for her friend. Zach suggests sexual favors. Mr. Tuttle says a car is a responsibility and a privilege, two concepts Zach has no time for. Mr. Tuttle pop quizzes on the correct driving hand position. Zach says, one hand on the wheel, the other groping your passenger. Slater answers correctly, hands at 10 and 2, so you have control of your car. Zach makes fun of his ability to drive safely without assaulting anyone. Kelly says Zach needs to take driver's ed seriously. He ignores her and displays the cheap ring he bought so every guy can see he owns her. Zach wants to know why his friends are sad, mistaking homework for depression. They say they don't have money for cars. Zach says he'll be driving his dad's Porsche when he turns 16, a very sad thing to lie about. Slater says he just bought a car. Zach says if he didn't buy that ring, he could have bought a car. Another bummer of a lie. Slater shows the gang his car and says it needs a little work. Zach jumps for joy because work and misfortune are synonymous to him. Then says even the doctors who worked on Michael Jackson couldn't fix this car. A bad joke that makes no sense for a variety of reasons. The gang minus Zach chips in and the car looks great. Zach, who sees the world like an infant, says he won't be 16 for months. So who cares because nobody can drive until then. Slater says he turns 16 next week. Zach decides to be the only teenager in history to actively prevent a friend with a car from getting their license. Zach says he's ready to take class seriously, unlike some people, cough, cough, Slater. Tuttle says Slater's his best student, and Zach says that's the thing. He's so good, he's been telling people he should teach the class. Now Zach has a paranoid teacher squashing a student's passion to learn, with the goal of depriving his friends and himself of happiness. Mr. Tuttle gives Slater a challenge, and he nails it. And Zach envisions a nightmare where Kelly and Slater are happily dating. But they're still discussing Zach, because this child can't picture a reality where he's not the center of attention and six feet away at all times. Zack offers Slater 20 bucks for a private lesson, then tells Screech to impersonate Mr. Tuttle and request Belding get the keys he left in the driver's ed car after Screech stalls for exactly five minutes. Zach goes to steal a car and leaves his friend alone on a bathroom floor to commit countdown timer identity theft. Zach spastically pulls the stolen car around. Slater says they could get in big trouble driving in the halls. Zach says his $20 deserves a hallway lesson. And he could learn better if Slater was driving and he was outside the car entirely. The best way to learn how to drive a car. Kelly's on her way to practice. Slater graciously offers a ride. Zack commands his woman to get back. Zack, fearful Kelly will get caught in this hot ride, thereby delaying his parked car tugger, screams at the top of his lungs. Slater, distracted by Zack's shrill outburst, crashes the car into lockers. Zack ignores Kelly's head wound and berates Slater. Then, hearing Belding coming on cue, flees the scene of the accident he orchestrated. Mr. Belding announces whoever's responsible has until tomorrow to fess up. Kelly blames herself because she accepted a ride knowing Zack's a jealous b And Zack got jealous like a b then cried like a b and that's why they crashed. Zack is ready to apologize, but Kelly, who just suffered head trauma, says it wasn't his fault. That's all Zack needs to hear to feel he's off the hook. Zack tells Slater he's fully to blame because he was driving. Zack says if he was at fault, he'd be man enough to turn himself in. Because the saddest lies are the ones we tell ourselves. Slater wonders how Belding was right there. Screech blabs he was on the phone because Zack was keeping him on the phone after planting info that the driver's ed keys were left unattended. They decide to teach Zack a lesson before he attempts more vehicular manslaughter. Zack wants to know where his woman is. They say Kelly went home because her head hurt. Zack, not a doctor, says she's fine. Kelly pretends like she doesn't remember Zack and finally gets to remove that tacky ring. But when Kelly says she remembers Slater is her boyfriend, that's too far, and Zack confesses, unwilling to give up a brain-damaged human he understands to be his property. Mr. Belding comes to class for a confession. Zack says it's fine, because Belding will say if nobody confessed, he's disappointed but can't get anyone in trouble. Only that doesn't happen, because that's not how trouble works. Belding says everyone is now flunking and they'll have to repeat driver's ed next year. Kelly, angel that she is, says it isn't fair for everyone to suffer and she'll take the heat. Slater, a gentleman, says he drove the car, so he'll take the rap. And with Belding almost out the door, Zack says it was his fault and he set Slater up to get caught in a stolen car. But only comes clean because it was his last shot of maybe, eventually, securing that parked car handy. Let's review. Zack Morris used jewelry to pressure a girl into a relationship she didn't want. Ignored vital lessons about driving safely. And when the first person in his group of friends was about to get their license, planted seeds of mistrust with his instructor, then used payoffs, lies, and identity theft to manipulate him into driving stolen school property with the intent to get him busted, then distracted him while he was operating a moving vehicle causing an accident that resulted in a head injury, and only confessed after his wounded girlfriend pretended to have the kind of brain damage that would negate their spurious union, then let two victims take the blame for their accident he caused and only accepted defeat as a last-ditch effort to get the theoretical car sex he felt entitled to.
Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Lisa says famous actor Johnny Dakota is coming to Bayside. Zach tells her to relax before she cracks her makeup, then laughs at his own joke. Zach mistakenly thinks Johnny is dying to meet him. Johnny politely looks past Zach's hubris and asks where the principal's office is. Zach offers no assistance. Jesse says it's that way, and Zach makes more unwanted contact and close talking with this rich stranger. Zach escorts Johnny 12 feet down the hall and introduces Principal Belding to his new best friend. Johnny ignores how gross Zach is being and says he wants to tape an anti-drug PSA in a high school and they're considering Bayside. Zach realizes he can exploit his proximity to a movie star for access to babes. Johnny's undecided after a tour, but Zach prepared a little something to help make up his mind. Here we go. We're 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 no we don't use drugs, this is just not cool. Yikes. Johnny lies and says that was great to make sure they never do Zach's rap ever again. Kelly's got Johnny Dakota fever. Zach says they're best buds and he's happy to make the intro. Zach presents her as an offering to entice Johnny to film there, and it works because she's Kelly goddamn Kapowski. And while Johnny is showing Kelly the attention she deserves, Zach is skipping class to sell stolen doorknobs Johnny touched and stolen sunglasses Johnny wore. Mr. Belding busts Zach's hallway hustle. Johnny, in a very chill move, tells Belding he gave Zach permission to sell this stuff as long as he donates the proceeds to an anti-drug charity. Johnny gives Zach the clothes off his back to see how much money he can raise. Zach says he's keeping this fly purple shit for himself. Zach notices it smells like pot in the bathroom and finds a roach on the floor. He says if Johnny discovers there's a stony baloney ganja fiend in their mist, it could blow his plan to meet babes. Johnny walks in and Zach swears he doesn't do this stuff. Johnny says he'd love to have an authentic narc in his ad and gets rid of the devil's lettuce with a very cool kick flush reverse spin to double finger gun maneuver. Johnny asks a room full of teens what they think about drugs. Jesse mentions the time she got hooked on caffeine pills because of Zach. Scud goes to pick up his girlfriend, but he's early, so he says he's going to the bathroom. The same bathroom where the fellas saw him when they found that roach. Mark Morris announces, I think we found our pothead. Sheriff Zach and his deputies find Scud smoking a cigarette. Zach illegally detains and interrogates a clearly innocent student, then insults his intelligence just to feel like a big man. Meanwhile, Kelly is starting a happy new life with Johnny. He's a solid guy, meeting her friends and letting them know about his good intentions to one day hopefully marry her. Zach interrupts to ask Johnny to sign a headshot he can use to bribe Belding. Johnny invites the gang to a party at his house, and Zach finally gains access to the babes he sensed to be nearby. Two groupies test Johnny's love for Kelly. He politely says hello, then alley-oops them to his new co-star, Zach. What a G. Slater wants Zach to introduce him to his new friends. Zach learns nothing from Johnny's playbook of being a G and says Slater is his driver, then tells him to shoot. Johnny lets Screech borrow his clothes after he had a spill, and Johnny's threads are helping Screech meet a lady. It's like Johnny has homie superpowers. Screech falls off the couch and needs urgent assistance for his back, which is in bad shape after years of carrying out Zach's schemes. Slater, Jesse, and Lisa all volunteer to leave the party and help. Zach says he'll throw him in a car, but he's coming right back to rage. Johnny is smooching Kelly, living the dream, when a friend hands him a joint. Johnny hits that shit one time, then passes it on the left-hand side to Kel. Kelly's thinking of trying this scary stuff that makes you giggle when Zach returns. He wants to know what the hell is going on here. Johnny kindly offers Zach some ooh-wee. Zach shames him for smoking doge in his home during a party, then tells Kelly they're leaving this den of sin. Johnny shows up the next day, on time and camera ready to shoot the PSA. Total pro. And holds no ill will about Zach disrespecting him in his home. Zach says he can't do the ad, and Johnny tells him to relax, because it's just that sticky green ill shit. He tries to make peace, and Zach, who has been touching him way too much since he arrived, slaps his hand away. Then says he was wrong, thinking Johnny's cool, which could not be further from the truth, and that he's not Johnny's friend, which has been true this whole time, a fact he neglected to acknowledge when he was using his celebrity to sell doorknobs just one day ago. Zach narks to his friends about Johnny and stages a walkout with a full crew ready to roll. Then Zach narks to Belding, and Belding narks to this guy. Hi, I'm Brandon Tartikoff, chairman of NBC Entertainment. Turns out Belding knows the chairman of NBC, and when he's not greenlighting shows about a blonde sociopath terrorizing a high school, he likes to appear in bad PSAs that lie to children about marijuana with words that could better describe Zach. Dumb. Stupid. Crazy. Dangerous. Stinks. Zach gives himself more lines than any of his friends, crowning himself new Johnny. Let's review. Zach Morris aggressively forced his friendship on a movie star looking to do charity work, schemed to use his celebrity to meet women, and when he couldn't win him over with this hip-hop abomination, offered up his ex-girlfriend like a prize, then turned around and stole property from Johnny and the school for financial gain. And even though Johnny was being way cooler than he needed to be, at every imaginable opportunity, even welcoming everyone into his home, Zach shames him for taking one hit off a joint at a party in the Hollywood Hills, then rejects the friendship he fabricated, and narked on his now ex friend to anyone with ears, then shot a new commercial where he made himself the star. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. You're watching Funny or Die TV. And now, the Divorced Dad's Cooking Show. <laughs>
<laughs> Keep watching for more Cooking for One, Cooking for Three every other weekend on Funny or Die TV. Zach Morris is trash. Kelly tells student council the cheerleaders need $600 for new uniforms. Zach suggests $200 and forcing them to wear bikinis. Wendy courtesy laughs at Zach's misogyny. Mr. Belding says there isn't enough money for new uniforms. Maybe next year. Jesse asks if there are any more motions. Zach says let's see those cheerleaders in motion. Wendy once again humors Zach to appease his fragile ego. Kelly suggests a date auction to raise the money. Jesse says that sexist flesh peddling, which sounds great to Zach, who immediately calls for a vote that gets passed by a room full of horny teens. Zach tells Linda she has a beautiful name that asks who she's bidding on. She tells Zach her name is Lydia. He says that name is beautiful, way prettier than that Linda junk. Lydia says she hasn't made any decisions about the auction and Zach volunteers to coach her. Kelly, trying to do her job, goes to take their order. Zach says she can beat it unless there's a date with Lydia on that menu, which isn't the case because this isn't a brothel. The date auction is going great, I guess. Who cares? Zach's up and this nice young lady he's been brainwashing for days to pay cash to get fingered bid 75 bucks. Going once. Going twice. Wendy out of nowhere with 100 smackers. Zach's face goes through all seven stages of grief. Then he has to be forcibly pushed off the stage. Wendy greets Zach at the max to talk about the dance. She drags him to her table and says she's so excited she hasn't been able to eat. Then jokingly says that's probably a good thing for her. Zach winces in disgust and points at her body to agree he thinks she's fat. Zach says he can't possibly have lunch today and tries to make a hasty exit. Then fakes a back injury and says he needs to go to the hospital right away. Wendy asks if there's anything she can do. Zach tells her to pray to God for his well-being. Wendy sees Zach in the hall and checks in on his medical status. Zach grabs his neck, then remembers he's supposed to grab his back, and tells her his team of doctors think with the right combo of acupuncture needle therapy, deep tissue massage, and vitamin B shots, he might be able to live a normal life one day. But of course, he won't be able to dance. Wendy says she called his house because she cares, and his mom said he was out surfing. Zach continues to lie, mistaking being large for being stupid, and says he was body surfing, a cover-up that doesn't make sense. Wendy sees through his nonsense. She knows he's lying so he doesn't have to go to the dance with her, because she doesn't look like Lydia, or Kelly, or any of the other several dozen girls he's hoping to finger before graduation. She says she'll have more fun going to the dance by herself, and tells this boy, bye. Screech won Jesse in the auction, and he's driving her nanners. She's considering ways to escape, but Zach says she made a commitment and needs to stick to it. Jesse realizes she sounds awful, and Zach, with zero self-awareness, says she sure does. Jesse says she knows Wendy isn't Zach's type, so if he can give her a chance, she can give Screech a chance. Zach remembers that Wendy person from three minutes ago exists. Zach's at the dance alone, getting called a loser by a bunch of nerds. He approaches Wendy to ask where she's been. She says at home, where she lives, fucking duh. Zach says he's sorry for being a fat shaming monster, but he'd like to dance. Wendy's cool about it, but wants to know what changed. Zach says it's because he feels guilty for dumping her over her weight. Wendy says that's some real bullshit, and she wants no part of Zach's pity date. And she'd rather hang by the finger foods. Two words that describe how Zach thought this night would end. Zach retreats to Nerd Mountain and is grossed out when one touches him. The dance is going fine, I guess? Who cares? Wendy applauds Kelly wearing the new uniform she paid for, proving she's the bigger person in the only way that matters. Belding announces this is the last dance, then... Uh... Okay. Zach approaches Wendy in the final seconds of the dance and says after embarrassing her and rejecting her and shaming her and ignoring her, he's finally ready to be seen in public with her for two minutes, tops. And when Lydia tries to cut in, still inculcated from Zach's coaching, he tells her to be gone. But if she wants, she can look at him and Wendy eating together later at the max because he assumes Wendy is hungry and he knows this will make Lydia jealous and more susceptible to his advances at a future time of his convenience. Only we never see Zach and Wendy at the max. In fact, we never see Wendy Wendy or Lydia ever again, because they both probably fucking killed themselves. Let's review. Zach Morris said female student athletes in need of new uniforms should wear bikinis and dance for him, then pushed a charity date auction through student legislation. On the grounds, it would be a meat market, and after trying to rig that meat market in his favor with his selection of meat, was won by the only girl in school nice enough to laugh at his horrible jokes about women, then visibly wore his disgust over her weight for the whole school to see, and faked a back injury to get out of being seen with her in public, then told her to pray to God he would recover, and continued to lie to her face even after he was caught, then offered to pity dance with her just to relieve his guilt, and only managed to believably pretend to want to dance with less than one song left in the evening, then tried to make everything right by feeding her to make a skinnier girl jealous. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. You're watching Funny or Die TV. Boop, boop, boop. And now, the Divorce Dad's Cooking Show. Gail, no. It's supposed to be my weekend. This is so unfair, Gail. 
Gail, this is unfair. Okay? No. Fine. Zach Morris is trash. The gang has to start a business for a class project. Zach tried coming up with one, but all that thinking hurt his head. Lisa made friendship bracelets in fashion club for her pals. Jesse's about to confess they don't have diddly when Zach decides to pull a morning lie out of his ass. He says they're selling handmade friendship bracelets, and Tuttle buys it. Screech says Lisa can make 19 bracelets a day, but she won't have time to sleep. Zach's fine with that if it means he'll be rich. Zach has a painfully unimaginative fantasy where he buys the school and works out of the former principal's office, surrounded by fake magazines featuring his face and shoes adorned with dollar signs. He's the fifth richest man in the world. Correction. Fourth. I just bought Bill Cosby. To learn a thing or two. Slater is his handyman and speaks with an ambiguously ethnic accent. You rang boss. Lisa does all his manual labor and never sleeps. Jesse has a respectable job because she's white, but is really just a glorified secretary because she's a woman. Belding's his chauffeur because Zach is petty. And Kelly is his vapid gold digging trophy wife because that's his idea of a dream marriage. The gang is fired up about the bracelets. Lisa says fashion club can make 60 a day, 80 if they pay them. Zach says 60 is fine, just fine. Zach says they need a business name. Slater suggests friendship forever because there's nothing ominous about that. Next order of business, who will be vice president? Jesse nominates Zach. Zach is outraged because he assumed it's a given he'd be president. Slater says they agreed Jesse would be their leader. Zach says that was yesterday when she was going to take the heat for not having a project. Before they had a million dollar idea with this impossible to patent product anyone can make. Plus a president needs to be ruthless, not like Jesse Snowflake Spano. Jesse's upset over Zach's bogus justification for unilaterally booting her and says she's starting her own company with Slater and Kelly. Zach scoffs at her professional naivety, then warns he will crush them. Zach taunts Slater in the halls and says if they beg him, he might let them back in on this lucrative business of selling $5 bracelets one at a time. Zach announces they've made $120 so far and it's all profit because they're using slave labor. Jesse made a video to introduce their new product to the market. It features a despondent emo Slater whose miserable world gets totally rocked by buddy bands. Hell yeah. These buddy bands look amazing. Way cooler than Zach's dumb bracelets that will not help you dance with babes. Plus, they're only $3.95. Zach complains that this product is too similar to his sweatshop jewelry. Jesse says they're totally different because his shit sucks and buddy bands rule. Mr. Tuttle concurs. Zach's whining about his failing business to a waiter who also does magic tricks. Because you should definitely take life advice from a guy simultaneously failing at two careers. Waiter Copperfield suggests offering a premium to their clients. Screech says like a free friend with every bracelet? This gives Zach a great idea. Zach doubles down on his slavery business model by sending Screech out as a personal friend for an hour with every bracelet purchase. Screech is exhausted from being a homie hooker. Zach tells Lisa to rest up because tomorrow she's the friend on the menu. And there are plenty of shady guys who will line up to buy her and also get a bracelet. Lisa and Screech make their long overdue exit from this horror show and join Jesse's team. And it's all smiles at buddy bands. And Jesse's going to actually pay the fashion club laborers. Imagine that. Zach squanders his final dollars on a giant out of business sign. He tries to make his friends feel guilty for succeeding, then buys a buddy band. And with their competition eliminated, Jesse orders more product to meet the market's demand, because she's been paying attention in class. Zach gifts Belding the buddy band. He says he considers him a true friend, and seeing him wear it would mean so much. And with Belding wearing a buddy band, thinking Zach actually cares about him, Zach goes to work affecting his industrial espionage. He says he wouldn't be caught dead with a buddy band now that Belding's wearing one, causing a school-wide demand for refunds and rendering all of Jesse's new product worthless. Zach goes to the max to throw himself a pouting party. But when the waiter tries to take his order, he says he doesn't want anything. He just wants to sit there, taking up valuable real estate, further driving home the fact that he does not understand how businesses work. The waiter delivers the message that Mr. Moby Pants over there wants to be friends, but isn't man enough to own his mistakes. The gang forgives Zach for his maniacally vindictive behavior over a class project to sell bracelets. Jesse's understandably concerned they're all going to fail, but Zach has a plan to lie his ass off for a passing grade. He connected two buddy bands with a friendship bracelet and says they're selling love cuffs now, a novelty S&M product he's claiming to be a friendship item. But because this new invention is terrible and nobody would ever buy it, Zach gave away all their remaining inventory for free to the nerds to make one last bad business decision for the road. Zach says the real lesson they learned was about friendship.
because he knows Mr. Tuttle will eat that corny shit up and give them all an A+. Let's review. Zach Morris showed up unprepared for a class project, then turned a gift from a friend into a business. And based on a racist, sexist daydream about being filthy rich, molded that business into a ruthless machine run on slave labor and ousted a woman to put himself in charge. And when he was beat in the market by a superior, more affordable product with better advertising, turned his friend into a servant thanks to guidance from a waiter who does magic. And when his friends all had enough and started working together successfully without him, sabotaged their thriving business by manipulating the emotions of a public school educator, then guilted them into taking him back, and pulled at the heartstrings of another teacher to get a passing grade despite his limitless professional incompetence. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash.